Hi everyone, uh, I'm Natish Malhotra and I'm a senior software engineer in the Azure for Operators team at Microsoft. Along with me we have uh, Jonathan Innes who is a software engineer in the Azure Arc enabled Kubernetes team at Microsoft and is also a core maintainer of Orchestra on GitHub. So let's start with the definition of release orchestration. Similar to how Kubernetes is an orchestration system that manages the lifecycle of containers, release orchestration applies the same concepts to applications. An application may be defined as a collection of containers working in unison to implement a set of features. What does application lifecycle management mean, uh, or LCM for short? Uh, LCM includes reliable rollouts of applications. This applies to installing the application, updating the application as new releases are made available, and also deleting the application in a robust and predictable manner. A reliable lifecycle management system must make provisions for auto-remediation on failures. This means that the system must not require the user to interact uh, with the system when failures occur. Uh, it should be capable of rectifying these failures on its own without human intervention. And for failures that cannot be reversed by the system, it must alert the end user or operator. Uh, other nice to have features may be to provide visibility into the state of the application release process for the entire life cycle of the application and to follow safe deployment practices. So let's begin with a case study, uh, which should be of interest to our current audience. So let's look at the management of network functions, or NFs for short, that run on a service provider operated Kubernetes cluster running somewhere in their data centers. Network functions are not always operated, deployed, and managed in isolation of each other. Network functions implementing parts of a 3GPP release-based 5G core often operate in conjunction with other network functions implementing other parts. For example, deploying a single session management function might depend on other network functions being in place and running, and maybe some other foundational PaaS elements to support the network function. In short, operating a single network function depends on the presence of other applications. Think of the dependencies as layers that support the operation of a single or of one or more network functions. For instance, uh, one or more CNFs may depend on infrastructure or platform components like a security layer um, made up of open policy agent, a networking or traffic management layer, for instance, using a service mesh, observability and telemetry systems like Prometheus, Grafana, Jaeger, a storage layer uh, made up of databases, and other miscellaneous components that are used to operate the network function. So let's talk about Helm, which is a cloud-native application management system and in a way implements the features for uh, application orchestration. So Helm uses the concept of subcharts to wrap dependencies for an application by packaging everything as a singular unit. Helm parses the parent chart and subcharts and creates a common pool of Kubernetes objects by resource type across all the charts. It then renders all resources by type from all charts and installs them in a particular order by resource type. When a chart is reversed, the order by resource type is reversed. So a Helm release for Helm is a true atomic unit of deployment in the sense that whatever is in the Helm package dependency tree gets flattened by resource type and is not treated as a node in a dependency graph at all. While Helm can model a dependency graph of a parent chart and dependencies in subcharts, this relation at Helm release time is not very sophisticated at all. The main issue is the lack of control when a particular order of deployment of subchart installations is required, or runtime conditions need to be met during release. Why did Helm choose to implement package dependency resolution this way? There are a few possible explanations for this. Flattening the dependency tree by type and then creating resources across types uh, by chart is efficient, fast, and it is reliable. Also in the ideal world, pods and their replica sets are either perfectly stateless and don't care about the release state of other components to come up correctly, 
and or they employ other mechanisms that are supported in Kubernetes and Helm to address some of the scenarios uh, not addressed by the default execution order in Helm. Despite it, its deficiencies, both Helm and Kubernetes provide workarounds to address the challenges. Using Helm hooks, Kubernetes jobs, and init containers, you might end up with a carefully crafted and working Helm release for a specific combination of components and conditions. It is not easy, almost impossible, to gener generalize from such a crafted Helm chart of various components to accommodate a different permutation of components and conditions as is required for various deployment scenarios of a complex network function. Other possible alternatives include popular general, fr general purpose frameworks like Spinnaker, Terraform, Ansible, or even uh, custom scripts to deploy applications. However, these frameworks are missing all context into the Kubernetes cluster as they run externally. None of these strategies provide a holistic, orchestrated view in terms of a dependency graph. There are different states wherein success and failures are difficult to track in a unified way. Additionally, they might have their own dependencies on other Kubernetes resource type that are not easily mapped. So you can see that uh, using the first set of uh, mitigations requires chart modifications. The general purpose framework is not cloud. Now let's take a look at Orchestra, which is designed to address all the shortcomings in Helm or in Kubernetes and is a release orchestration system for a group of applications. Orchestra is a cloud native system to manage the life cycle of a group of applications or Helm charts by building on top of Helm, which is capable of managing the life cycle of a single application. The Orchestra controller is a Kubernetes operator that acts on an application group custom resource type. This resource serves as a declarative manifest containing information for each application in the application group and dependencies among those applications and their subcharts. Orchestra leverages some popular CNCF projects to achieve the goal of release orchestration, like Argo Workflow as its workflow engine to manage dependencies, Flux CD Helm controller to automate the Helm operations, Chart Museum as a staging Helm registry for decomposed application charts and subcharts, and kept in use for continuous evaluation and quality. An application group resource is a powerful construct that provides a unified view and definition of intent and the status of orchestrated releases. It is possible to orchestrate a set of unrelated Helm packages without making changes to these packages that would be required when using Helm hooks, Kubernetes jobs, or init containers. The unit of deployment for orchestra-based Helm releases is not based on a single parent chart, but a workflow definition with a custom resource type that models the relationship between individual Helm releases making up the whole. Application group allows structuring an orchestrated set of releases by grouping uh, the releases either through defining a sequence of non-related charts and or charts with subcharts where subcharts are not merged into a single release but are executed as a release of their own inside a workflow step. Rather than executing a Helm release from a pool of resources ordered by resource type, as is done by Helm, uh, while losing all context of an actual dependency graph, Argo enables a DAG-based dependency graph with defined workflow steps and conditions to transition through the gap. Argo also provides detailed insights into the graph and its state through a web-based dashboard. Helm releases matching the transition in the graph are executed by the Helm controller shipped as part of the orchestra system. Kept in an optional component that ships with orchestra can be leveraged to perform continuous evaluation and quality gates based promotion while transitioning through the workflow DAG. Mission critical applications like 5G network functions warrant a need for reliable zero downtime in service upgrades. In view of the fact that some of these mission critical applications may be deployed in an air gap cluster operated by a third party provider, the vendor of the application must ensure that these applications are fully automated and self managed, freeing the service provider from having to learn how to manage each of these applications and their associated components. 
On top of fulfilling the requirements of an orchestration system, Orchestra implements defense in layers. The first layer, which may not necessarily be part of Orchestra itself, is to leverage existing rollout strategies, like standard Kubernetes recreate or rolling upgrade strategy, canary blue-green deployments by leveraging the traffic management feature of service meshes. By incorporating Captain into Orchestra's ecosystem, the next layer of defense depends on the continuous evaluation of the application being deployed. This is similar to the rollout strategies, but rather than limiting it to the health or function, functioning of a single application, we can evaluate the performance at a system level. This matters since changes in one application in the application group can have direct or indirect impacts on the other applications. Quality gates, in addition, provide a mechanism to hand over manual control for promoting an application to the end user operator as and when required. An application group custom resource is the atomic unit that Orchestra acts upon. An application group spec contains a list of Helm release specifications for each application that make up the group, like the location of the chart in an upstream Helm registry, the overlay values that must be applied to this specific release, and other such details. Each application in the application group declares a set of dependencies on other applications in the group. The defined dependency order is parsed and used to generate the workflow DAG. On reconciling the resource, Orchestra submits an Argo workflow resource type containing the application group graph. Orchestra caches or stages the required Helm charts in a local repository for which it uses Chart Museum. This involves decomposing the parent chart and its subcharts into their own releases or Helm charts. The actual Helm releases as per workflow steps triggered by Argo and are executed through a Helm operator, which is part of Orchestra. Through a series of animations, let's demonstrate what occurs during the execution of a single workflow node. Since Orchestra operates on a Kubernetes custom resource type, it can easily plug into any CD system or be deployed directly into the cluster using kubectl or customize. Let's zoom into a single step of the workflow DAG, which could execute a parent release or one of the subcharts. Each step of the DAG is executed by an executor template, run as a Kubernetes pod by the Argo workflow controller. The first executor is responsible for deploying the application. Here we show the Helm release executor, which on execution applies a Helm release custom resource by parsing the application spec derived from the application group manifest. The applied Helm re release resource is then picked up by Flux CD Helm controller. Helm controller is responsible for carrying out the Helm op operations like install, delete, or update based on the Helm release spec. Once the Helm release resource is successfully reconciled, all resources associated with the Helm release are deployed. As the Helm release transitions into a ready state, the pod may start exporting metrics to Prometheus. These metrics come in handy uh, when performing continuous evaluation using Captain. Once the Helm release custom resource moves into a status condition of success, the Helm release executor pod exits and the workflow progresses to the next chain executor. Here, the captain executor triggers an evaluation to be performed by sending a cloud event to the captain control plane. Captain controller, in turn, triggers a pre-configured test harness to initiate sending traffic to the application pods that were deployed as part of the Helm release. With Prometheus configured as the metric source, captain control plane starts evaluating the user-defined SLOs and results from the testing harness. Once all SLOs are satisfied, the captain executor pod returns success and the workflow transitions to the next application node. With that, I'm gonna hand off the controls to Jonathan who will walk us through a demo of using Orchestra using a simple set of applications.
Thanks, Natish. As Natish mentioned, my name is Jonathan Ennis, and I am an engineer on the Azure Arc Enabled Kubernetes team at Microsoft, as well as I'm a maintainer of the Orchestra project. Um, and so for this portion of the presentation, we're going to take a look at a demo of how you can actually go about configuring all of your microservices and all of your complex application logic and describe the dependent relationship between those things using Orchestra, as well as getting the lifecycle management of when you're doing upgrades, um, if things fail while the upgrade is happening, how they how we go about rolling back those applications um, that you deployed so that we make sure that things are always running in a smooth way. Also, we'll take a look, a uh, quick look at how we're planning on actually enabling um, advanced monitoring on rollout for some of the application logic um, in the future and what the roadmap looks like going forward for Orchestra. So with that, um, let's take a look at the demo. So I'm going to pull up the um, example book info application group that exists within the Orchestra project. Um, as I kind of mentioned, application groups are the Orchestra idea of how we group together applications and how we uh, describe the dependent relationships between the applications. Um, so here we have a book info application group and it has two applications within it. It has the ambassador application, which is the uh, emissary ingress ambassador application, and it has the book info Istio example chart application. And here we have uh, described that the book info application depends on the ambassador application to roll out successfully. Um, additionally, within the book info application, um, we have various subcharts, and we've we're able to describe the dependent relationship between those subcharts as well, not just at the application level, but at the subchart level. Um, so we break we've broken up the book info application to four different subcharts, as well as the parent book info chart. And so these subcharts um, depend on one another as well. So here the product page is dependent on the reviews to roll out successfully and reviews is dependent on details and ratings to roll out successfully. And then additionally within the spec, you can specify things like target namespace and then values as well. And this is essentially how you specify your application group. So if we now move to look at the cluster itself, Let's first take a look at what gets deployed when we deploy the Orchestra chart. Uh, when we deploy the Orchestra chart and onboard to Orchestra, we get the Orchestra controller, as well as we get um, two Argo pods that are uh, monitoring workflow containers. Um, so under the hood, Orchestra is using workflows, um, Argo workflows to actually monitor the rollout of these charts. And so we need Argo to do that, as well as we have a chart museum to stage charts and uh, Flux CD Helm controller and source controller to actually um, reconcile Helm releases that will deploy as part of the workflow. So with that, we can actually apply this example to the cluster and show what happens when we apply these application groups. So with that, we've created the book info application group. If we pull up and uh, the application group on the cluster, we can see that the workflow is currently reconciling. This is in a progressing state um, and it's it's currently rolling out. Um, and one of the nice things, like I said, under the hood, we're using a workflow. This thing is running. Um, one of the nice things about using Argo workflows is we kind of get the Argo UI as packaged with um, all of this, the features that come with Orchestra. And so we can actually go over and take a look at the workflow as it's rolling out and the uh, the dependent relationship logic that exists uh, here. So here we see that the ambassador application is currently reconciling, it's currently rolling out. Um, and then after this, it'll roll out the book info application. So we can kind of see the same logic occur on the cluster itself. If we take a look at the pods, um, we'll see that the ambassador application is currently in a running state as the charts have been deployed. And if we go back and look at this uh, DAG graph, we see that the ambassador application is completed and now it's moving on to roll out the book info application. And so it'll do that on the cluster, uh, completing each of the steps, rolling out the subcharts, and then once it's completed, we'll see that the workflow has completed and that the application group is in a ready state. So this is going to take a couple minutes for everything to roll out successfully. Um, we can monitor things as they roll out. Additionally, if we take a look at the application group status fields, we see that we get the information of the Helm release reconciliation status. So for this application, the ambassador application, we also package uh, the Helm release reconciliation statuses within the condition object. 
and we'll see the same for book info once it succeeds. So take a look back at the pods in the cluster. We're still running. We're rolling at the product page. The product page is completed, so now we're doing the book info parent chart. And once the parent chart completes and runs, Looks like it's completed. We'll see that here. So we see that the workflow has succeeded. If we check the workflow in the cluster, we'll see the same state. And looking at the, so we see succeeded here. And looking at the application group itself, we'll also see that the workflow and reconciliation has succeeded and everything is ready. So. From the state of the cluster, this is kind of your classic day one operations. You're rolling out all your charts, you're laying down your infrastructure, and then you're laying out your applications, and you kind of have this dependent relationship between your charts. But let's say we want some reliability in our lifecycle management, and we want to be able to actually um, make sure that when we're doing upgrades and rollouts, that things are upgraded successfully and they don't break in between. Um, we also offer that with Orchestra as well. Um, so first, we'll look at the success state. Um, so let's take a look at an upgrade scenario. So if we take a look at an upgraded book info application group here, um, we'll see that we're adding an application in this case. So let's say we needed more application logic and we need to add a new application on top of what we already have. Um, here we're adding the pod info application. And the pod info application is a chart that's made by the Flux maintainers. And uh, this is dependent on the book info chart to roll out. And in this case, we've removed um, dependency on ambassador for book info. So book info is actually going to roll out first and then pod info is going to roll out and then we'll see ambassador uh, roll out and update. In the case of book info and ambassador, in this case, there's no updates that are happening. So the rollout will occur pretty quickly and pod info will get added to the set of applications in the cluster. So let's take a look at this happening. If we apply this. Samples. We'll see that their workflow is kicking off here um, and the containers are creating. If we take a look again at the UI, we'll see that the workflow has updated to the newer um, application group workflow. So it's rolling out the book info application first, and it's just going to validate that these things are at the correct version and that they're in a ready state. So again, this will move forward pretty quickly and complete pretty quickly. And these are in a container creating state. Parent chart is rolling out. And we see that now the pod info step is running. So pod info is getting created on the cluster here at the bottom. And once that one is succeeded in reconciling and in a running state, that one will complete and then it'll move to the ambassador piece. And once the, the ambassador piece will also kind of do some checking of the version, but it's all going to be fairly consistent. So it should also complete fairly quickly. And we see that that step completed. And so this workflow again succeeded on the cluster. And again, if we check here, um, we'll see the workflow is in a succeeded state and then the application group should be updated in a succeeded state as well. Um, so we've just added an application as kind of a day two operation um, and added this uh, application to the cluster and described the dependent relationship between that application and some of the older applications that we've deployed. So finally, we want to see um, what happens if things fail on rollout and what happens if um, something breaks, the chart doesn't work appropriately and we want to roll back to the previous state. Um, so here we have an invalid book info application group. And this one is valid from the, the perspective of the actual spec itself. However, there something is going to break um, as the application group rolls out. So in this case, we have the same set of applications. And actually here, just for the sake of showing, we want to upgrade the book info or the pod info application to a newer version. Um, however, so in the same order as before, book info is going to roll out. Actually, in this case, pod info doesn't have any dependencies, so these two are going to roll out simultaneously, and then ambassador is dependent on this pod info app. However, in this case, um, we're also trying to upgrade ambassador, 
And upgrading between these two versions, uh, it's not going to work because of uh, some immutable fields that are going to exist between the two ambassador charts. And so here, when we try to upgrade, it's going to fail and not get into a ready state. And so we've also reduced the release timeout here, which is the time that it has for it to get into a ready state before it tries to it abandons it and rolls back. And so within a minute, this thing will not upgrade appropriately. It will fail and it should roll back to the previous state where the pod info application should be at the previous version, which um, in this case was 5.2.1. So we're trying to upgrade to a 6.0.0. So let's go ahead and apply this and watch that in action. So again, we're going to apply this to the cluster. If we take a look at the workflow again, we see that these are now running simultaneously because the dependency relationship is different again. And so it's going to take the time to check the book info versions, the pod info versions. In the case of pod info, it's going to upgrade. Um, so if we look at pod info, it actually already upgraded because this container is newer, this pod is newer. Um, so it's actually already completed and it's going to try and roll out the ambassador application now. And so as it rolls out the ambassador application, we're going to actually see if we look at the Helm releases on the cluster, we see that this one is actually in a failed state. The upgrade retries have been exhausted in this case because it's failed to upgrade. And so ambassador eventually is going to fail this step. And if again, if we're going to have to wait around a minute for that to happen, But in a minute, we're currently at 44 seconds. Once the timeouts hit, we should see this fail with red X's. So we see this errored out. This is failed with red X's, so the workflow itself has failed. And actually, if we take a look at the workflows now, we see that we've kicked off a book info rollback workflow, which is going to um, essentially just deploy the previous succeeded version. Um, so in this case, we see that the dependent relationship of this book info um, has what is the current application group spec that we had applied where book info and pod info roll out in unison. However, in the previous spec, they roll out in order. And so here we're going to redeploy book info um, to the older version and um, actually, if we look at pod info here, we'll see that the current version is 6.0.0. However, as soon as rollback occurs, we'll go back to the previous version that succeeded. So we're going to have to kind of wait for book info to, to roll out and complete. Product page rolls out. And now we're doing the book info parent chart. We'll wait for the book info parent chart to complete. And now we're going to look at pod info and roll out the older version of pod info. And so on the cluster, we should see that pod info has terminated and a newer version has rolled out. And then if we look at the Helm release, we'll see that this Helm release should be on the older version. So looking specifically at the Helm release, we see that we're now on version 5.2.1. So that's kind of the story for Orchestra. Uh, we offer you the ability to describe your dependent relationships between your applications at the at the high level microservice application level, as well as if you have subcharts that you need to describe dependent relationships between, we offer you the ability to do that as well. While also giving you rollback scenarios if things break as your application groups roll out, if there's some failure at the application or at the chart level, um, we'll roll back to the previous version. Um, so where we're looking going forward, as I mentioned, is um, we're looking to describe um, more steps within a workflow stage um, so that you can actually monitor things as they roll out. So for instance, in this case, the Helm release is the actual rollout of the chart. 
Well, on top of that, we'll give you the ability to, um, for instance, with Captain to monitor SLAs and SLOs of the Helm release chart as it rolls out so that you we consider something failed if the application itself is unhealthy um, because it doesn't meet some SLA that you've defined. So we're giving you these kind of complex life cycling scenarios um, so that you can ensure that things are safely rolling out as uh, especially when things are already in production in day two scenarios. Um, so that is the demo. Once again, we want to thank you for listening to our talk. Um, if you're interested in the project at all and you're interested in uh, understanding how uh, we have put everything together, you can feel free to look at any of the issues that we have on GitHub at github.com slash Azure slash Orchestra. If you're interested in looking at the examples or trying out some of the things I just described, um, you can reference our documentation or GitHub. Um, the documentation is at the link there. Um, once again, thank you and uh, we appreciate your time.